everybody, welcome to another Torbens Live Colour Session. My name is Fiona, I'm the Torbens Colour Specialist and we are here tonight to talk all things colour and certainly to answer all of your frequently asked questions. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time, the way that we run these sessions are as follows. Uh, for the next half an hour I will be on screen um, streaming if you like live, answering questions that come up etc into my feed um, and certainly answering, I've got a few pages here of frequently asked questions. But don't let that stop you. Um, if you're wanting to know anything um, in regards to colour, uh, any projects that you're embarking on, and certainly if you'd like to know about our wonderful portfolio of products that we have available to beautify your space, you've come to the right place. So as I said, for the next half an hour while I'm streaming um, live, it's uh, not, well, you're not able to actually upload any photos. So if you're wanting a little bit of uh, information regarding you know um, a certain area etc and you've got a photo that you'd like some help with please wait until I finish after the next half an hour and then pop that up into um, our feed and then when I'm off screen um, I'll certainly do my best to answer all of your questions and have a look at the photos. So I am going to start so I do have quite a lot of questions here so let's um, see how we go. So I'm going to start with a couple of questions that were put into, um, into the feed when we announced, I think early on this week that we were having this session. So the first one comes from Narelle. So thank you very much Narelle for your question. And your question is, hi, what white do you recommend for painting bathroom tiles? I quite like cotton ball, but need your advice. Look, cotton ball is a fantastic color to use um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful white. The only thing that I would probably ask to get a little bit more information from you is to ask you know what color vanity do you have is it timber etc etc um, and what else features in that bathroom so what's your flooring do you have a pattern tile um, and how much tiling do you have within the space because there's also an opportunity if you like to inject some color because bathrooms certainly um, look fantastic when you start using you know brighter or, or an actual color whether you introduce beautiful um, Oh gosh, you can introduce some beautiful pinks, um, certainly some beautiful turquoise colors, etc. So if, you've, if you're still on, um, if you're joining us tonight and you'd like a little bit more information, pop a little bit more um, information to the feed for me, please. Just let me know what else features in your bathroom and then I can help you select that perfect white. But I do think that cotton ball is a fantastic color. Also, another couple of whites that you could look at are Tahira white and Cradle white, but let's find out a little bit more information. So thank you. Um, the next question that I have is from Matt. Um, thank you, Matt, for your question. If you are joining us tonight, if not, I will pop some information into the feed. So your question is, I am building a modern Queenslander and wish to stick with neutral colors, but staying away from the cold Hampton greys, looking for more of a greyish. Perhaps surf mist, colorbon roof, and something along the lines of barely beige, strawn grey or alpine snow with white window frames. I know we have to be mindful of depth of colour as you have previously mentioned they get washed out in the sun. I would love your thoughts and advice. Fantastic Matt, thank you for joining us. Okay, so greyish is certainly becoming um, very, very popular and we are seeing, um, you know, Maybe not so much just to shift away from that Hamptons feel. And I do believe that that's going to be around for quite a while. And especially if you are coastal, people are still using uh, greys, blue based greys, etc. But if you're wanting a greyish um, and you're wanting something that's going to handle, you know, a, a, a lot of sunlight, if you like. And being a Queenslander, I presume or I'm guessing that perhaps you're in Queensland. Have a look at there's quite a few different whites. Um, one thing that you can look at is the LRV of a white, which is the light reflectance value. So it gives you an idea, um, each color has a rating and it'll give you an idea of how much reflectance it will have. Um, and you know, because obviously when you're putting a, a white effectively, I know we're talking about a gray, but we're, we're talking about quite a light gray. And when you pop it outside, it does tend to bleach out or dilute out in the sun. So you do want your color to have a certain, um, depth of color if you like and so when I'm working with whites I like to see um, or I feel comfortable and know that I have success when I use a white that has an LRV of around about 65 to 80 and working in the parameters of that you're quite successful. Um, anything sort of um, 
going much higher as in much lighter, you do tend to get, or you, you risk um, a glare, like the glare factor. And the last thing you wanna do is have to sit outside with your sunglasses on at seven o'clock in the morning when you're enjoying your morning cup of tea. It's not always, you know, fantastic. So you've mentioned that you um, do like quite a few of these colors. So I've also got a few more to add to your list that I think would definitely be well worth having a look at. And one of them is gray matter. Um, gray matter is a beautiful um, grayish, if you like, and it sits really well with um, Colorbond Surf Mist, as you have um, mentioned that you're thinking about using that. Now I'm looking at it here, it's got an LRV of 70, so it is fantastic. I'm going to see if I can just quickly get that up on my screen for you, and then I can share, um, share it with you. So if you are shopping for color, and I presume you are, that's why everybody's joining us tonight, a fantastic place to start, and I'm just going to um, change to my laptop. Awesome, that has worked and pop myself into the corner. Fantastic. So if you are shopping for color, a fantastic place to start is to visit the Taubman's website. So that's www.taubmans.com.au. And then you'll be brought to a page that looks like this and then you can start to search. If you select color or paint colors, it will bring you to this. And the fantastic thing about um, this page or this website, if you like, is all of the colors have been grouped in their family, so to speak. So it's very easy to navigate your way around this site. Now, you can click whites and neutrals as I'm doing here, and we'll go down. And there's some beautiful tones that are appearing on our screen here. Now, I'm not sure whether gray matters on this, but if it's not, I'm going to show you another uh, place that you can visit that will enable you to find out more information uh, regarding a color. No, it's not going to come up here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to show you that if, I'll just see if I scroll down to the bottom, we'll go back to paint colors. And I'll scroll down, scroll down to the bottom here and I'll take you to the, um, the order color swatches if you like, this part of the um, page. So down here, this is fantastic. So. In the search function here, you can search for pretty much any color. And here we go. So I've popped in gray matter. And so it'll bring up, this is a beautiful um, tone here, as you can see. But if you're wanting to, as I was talking about the LRV, the light reflectance value, if you're wanting to find out um, what a color, um, what a color's value is, this is the place to go. So then if I click on, oops, view color details, Let's hope it's going to work. Fantastic. Just down here, it says it has an LRV of 70. So it gives you all the information. So this is a fantastic color. And I know that it sits really well with Surf Mist. And it's going to give you that beautiful, um, soft, soft gray. Certainly uh, would look fantastic on your Queenslander. Now, another color is as well. So I'll just go back here. You did say alpine snow, but I just want to direct you towards aspen snow. It probably has just a little bit more um, depth to it. So it has an LRV of 78, um, but it is, again, it's a very, very soft gray, like very soft. But I would certainly recommend when you're starting to um, get more into the lighter tones and we're talking about using it outside, um, Definitely get yourself a sample pot. I'm going to come back onto the screen now. Get yourself a sample pot. This is the best bit of um, advice that I can give you. So if you go into a hardware store, um, and I'll, I'll use Bunnings as an example. So when the paint comes in on the pallets, they have what they call pallet liners. So they're large pieces of cardboard. So if you grab one of those and um, cut the cardboard to at least a meter by a meter square, and then brush out three coats of the color onto the cardboard. Now move that cardboard, and we're talking about an exterior, move the cardboard around the exterior of the dwelling, etc., so that you can see how the color is going to work within its environment. And you can see how the color is going to work when you've got, you know, a lot of natural sunlight, etc., on it. And it's really important because when you're working um, or using effectively whites um, in an external environment, 
as I said before, the last thing you want to do is have a lot of glare. So this is the best tip that I can give you. And again, when you're working with whites internally, there are a lot of factors that will influence the color. So a sample pot is again, a fantastic way to see how it's going to sit within its environment, see how it's going to work with the natural light that you have, also the artificial lighting, so you know your lights that you're going to be using, your flooring, um, any furnishings that you have, window furnishings, etc. All of those things will influence your color. So a sample pot is certainly the way to go. Okay. Uh, what else do I have here? All right. So another question that we have is. Um, we have recently purchased a home that has beautiful white walls, something like cotton ball. It seems to be the closest match and the doors are very yellow. What do you suggest as I want the doors and architraves to be the same color as it is a smaller house? Okay, so listening to that and um, the fact that you've just recently purchased it, I'm wondering perhaps, I don't know if you wanna give us a little bit more information on how old your home is, etc. I guess the question or something to consider is if your doors and trims are looking quite yellow, um, let's see whether they could potentially be oil based. Now the easiest way to test this, and I always say use a black rag, probably, and we're going to do what we call a, the metho test. So get yourself a black rag, put a little bit of methylated spirits onto the rag and wipe it onto the painted surface. Now, if the paint comes off, we know that it is a water-based coating and if the paint shines up, we know that it is an oil-based coating. So if it's a water-based coating, it's literally a very light sand. So you're basically deglossing the surface and then you wipe it down, etc. And then you can paint with a water-based enamel. Now, if it comes back that it is an oil-based finish, what I would recommend you do is give it a light sand, use a product that we have called 3-in-1, which is a primer sealer undercoat. And that is going to um, aid as your adhesion coat, enabling that your top coat is going to stick. And then, so using your three in one and then using um, something like Torben's water-based enamel. Now the beauty of using a water-based enamel is it's going to stay true to color. So it's going to stay beautiful and white. And this is what you're wanting. And if you're wanting to um, tint it up um, to match the color that you have on your walls, um, and we're mentioning something like cotton ball here, you can certainly do that without a problem. Um, and as I said again, so three in one and then top coat with Torman's water-based enamel. Fabulous products. Okay, the next question is, we've just purchased a house that is small in size and unfortunately does not receive a lot of natural light. We have an oak looking floor through, throughout and want to introduce a green feature wall and want to paint the, paint the inside white, help. Okay, so I guess if you have, let me just make sure I'm reading this correctly. Um, you've got a, a house that's rather small that doesn't get a lot of natural light and we have an oak flooring. Okay, so if you've got a house that doesn't get a lot of natural light and I'm just going to presume that, you know, bedrooms, etc., probably aren't getting much light either. The general rule or the general way to work with whites is, um, for areas that don't get a lot of natural light, use a white that is slightly warmer. And for areas that get a lot of natural light, like your north facing rooms, etc., you can actually use a light, uh, sorry, use a white that is um, cooler. So the reason we say to use a white that's slightly warmer is the fact that if you've got areas that um, low light, if you put in a, a cooler white or perhaps a white that has a blue undertone, you can risk the room looking a little bit more gloomy, it feels quite cold, etc. So using something that's slightly warmer. Now immediately I am thinking about using um, crisp white. You would have heard me talking about this before for those that are joining us again. Um, crisp white is my favorite white and it is our number one white. And the beauty of crisp white is it, for, I mean most whites, when you're looking at you know all the different tone whites, you know, there's complexity of um, different tints that make up a color. And you know, some of the whites have got things like um, black, red, um, a little bit of yellow, etc. you know, to create these different undertones. So crisp white has um, raw umber, which is a, I'm going to say it's quite a murky brown, but it gives off the most beautiful, soft glow. And it still appears white, but you don't have an undertone that can risk um, let's just say looking slightly dirty and 
and looking a little bit gloomy in the areas where you've got less light. So I'd recommend using something like Taubman's Crisp White. And then as you said here, and then the beauty of that again, I should mention is the fact that because it's quite a light white, you can use that to create, um, I guess the illusion of more space, um, reading that your rooms, etc., are quite small. So what I'd recommend doing is you could do your ceiling um, in a ceiling white or a ceiling flat and have it tinted up to crisp white. And then for your um, walls, you could either use something like Torben's Endure in a matte or a low sheen and have that again tinted to crisp white. And then for your doors and trims, as I was saying before about a water-based enamel, have that tinted up to um, crisp white as well. Now the beauty of using one color, if you like, is the eye just continually looks up and over around the space and generally where the ceiling meets the wall um, is where the eye will stop, where the color changes. And you know, the eye can sort of look around and go, oh yeah, it's, it's quite a small space. You can you subconsciously sort of size up the area. But when you've got the one color sort of up and over surrounding you, the eye just continually looks around and it creates the illusion of more space. So definitely have a look at Chris White. Um, and I should bring that up onto the screen for you. Let's just pop myself in the corner. All right, so I'll bring up crisp white. And then I'm thinking for, here we go, this is beautiful. Whoops. Look at that, that is a very soft white with a slight, you can see there's just a slight, slight warmth to it. It is fantastic and it works in many many spaces it's a color that I love to um, almost default to because I know how well it works and then to work with that I did know let me just get this right um, you're wanting to introduce a green feature wall so I would recommend a green that has more of a sort of more of a yellowy sort of undertone as opposed to a blue undertone and I'm thinking that something like uh, Seed Sprout would be a really lovely fresh green that's going to sit really well with, oops, crisp white. My goodness. Let me just go again. Okay, here we go. Here's Seed Sprout. Oops. That is a lovely fresh type of green that works extremely well with crisp white. Um, if you're wanting something a little more intense, why not have a look at uh, uh, Quaking Grass. So that's very similar. It's just got a little bit more um, depth to it, if you like. And then there's one more, which is deeper again, depending on the feel that you're wanting. And this would be my other suggestion for you. And I'm happy to pop these into the feed at the end of the night. Uh, there we go, the middle color here. Grassy Knoll, I think is um, a fantastic white. There we go. So that would be another color that I would suggest having a look at. I know that they work extremely well with um, crisp white. Um, and I think that you'll find that that's going to um, certainly make a wonderful statement. Okay, I will come back here. Okay, so, right, okay, what else do I have in front of me here? Okay, hi, I'm trying to match a white from, Tor from Torbens for my kitchen bench. Um, the bench is a stone with gray lines running through it. Is it, it is a takeoff of marble. I'm looking for a soft white gray. Wonderful, okay, so I immediately think of something like, we're talk I'm imagining sort of a Calcutta marble, which is um, very, I guess you could say very much on trend, very reminiscent of Hamptons. I know that it features, um, quite a lot in Hampton style homes. And immediately I think of two colors and they are Torben's Alpine Snow and Aspen Snow. So because of the undertone that it has, I know that they work extremely well with, with this st style of marble, if you like. The other thing that you could do is to um, download the Colorsmith app 
and you could take a photo of your bench top and you could have a play around with creating your own tone um, or your own color, sorry. So, you know, you're going to take a photo of the bench top, uh, moving the eye across um, the image and extracting um, a tone out of the bench top that you like and you can bring that to life. And the beauty of that is you can create your own color. Um, it populates a QR code, take it down to your local hardware store and get yourself a sample pot. Again, if you're going to do that, I would recommend, um, as I always say, getting yourself a large piece of cardboard, at least a meter by a meter square, trialing a sample, um, brushing out, sorry, the sample pot, three coats, and then trialing the color within your space. But that's um, certainly well worth having a play. And I will, um, at the end of this session, pop the link to Colorsmith in here for you. Um, but as I said, Alpine Snow or Aspen Snow are the two colors that I tend to default to when we're talking about that style of stone. The other color you could also have a look at as well is Taubman South Pole. That's another beautiful soft tone that I know would work well. So have a look at those. I'm happy to pop something else into the feed for you. Okay, so... Um, the next question I have, and I do have one here, we have a rental property that is light and spacious in the kitchen dining area. However, the bedrooms receive minimal light. What white would you recommend and can we use varying whites throughout the house to allow for this? So I guess, look, you can. I don't think that you need to use the one white um, throughout your whole home. So a lot of people do tend to use, as I was saying before, if you've got a room or a space that's north facing, that is receiving a lot of natural light, you certainly can use a cooler toned white, um, perhaps using something like um, Miss Universe, etc., within that space. And then when you go into um, the bedrooms or the areas um, that are not receiving the light, that are quite um, dim, if you like, you can use a white that has a little bit more warmth to it. So certainly have a look at, and there's another white um, also, that I think would be fantastic is something like Taubman's Inner Circle. That's a beautiful white that has, um, it's slightly warmer and I know that it's going to work within an environment. But the way to keep um, your space um, connected, if you like, is using the same white on your doors and trims. And for something like this, where you're going to use varying whites throughout your space, I'd recommend using Taubman's Brilliant White. It's a beautiful, clean, bright white um, and using that in, as I've talked about before, our water-based enamel, using that in um, the water-based enamel, using that for your doors and trim, that's going to connect the space, so to speak. So don't be afraid to mix your whites up using, as I'm saying, a brighter white for you know your sun-drenched areas and then using a warmer white for spaces that don't receive as much light. Certainly go for it. Okay, I do have some more... Um, Right, hi Michelle, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Let me see here, hi Fiona, I'm going to paint a low lit bedroom in Windy Beach Half Strength. For the trim I was looking at Miss Universe, does this sound okay? Or should I consider either crisp white or brilliant white or an alternative suggestion? Thank you. So let me just have a quick look here. Okay, I'm going to just get Windy Beach up onto the screen. There's Windy Beach. Now looking at that and you're going to do half strength. You know what? I'm looking at that straight away. I would say possibly Brilliant White. I think Brilliant White's going to be nice and clean and if you like sharp against that tone. Um, so it's going to make, it's going to define the color. And what I love about this when you're using a clean white um, or bright white against um, you know, the walls that have got a little bit of color, it really defines, it defines, um, defines the color, defines the space. And you can see where the white meets or the trims meet the wall color. You can actually see the tone, etc., that exists within the color. So I think that would work really, really well, but I'd certainly recommend using Brilliant White. I think you'd find that um, to be successful. I'll come back. Okay. Okay, hi Bree, thank you very much for joining our session tonight. So your question is, hi Fiona, what exterior white would you suggest that is a classic chalky type white for a modern farmhouse style facade? Thanks, okay, so let's have a look. We want 
sort of a classic chalky white. So I've got my trusty fan deck here. Okay, so I guess the question as well, Brie, is to ask you what else is featuring? So I know that you're wanting um, an exterior white, but are there any other colors that are going to feature within the design or the exterior design of your home? And what else surrounds so that I can take that into account just to give you that right tone? But if I'm looking as we are, so you've got chalk stone. Um, you want a nice chalky type white. Okay, so there's, um, where are we here? So there's Torben's chalk stone, there's Torben's um, inclination which is another lovely white that I will um, pop some links to the colors into the feed. Um, let me just see what else I might have that I think would look sensational with that. Again, looking for a nice chalky white. I don't want, I mean, I want to keep you white, but I still want you, if it's for an exterior facade, we still want to have a little bit of substance or complexity to the white so that as I've been talking about before when you're out in the sun it's not going to be blinding and really glary. So I mean burnished stone is another chalky sort of type of white I think that could work really really well. So what have I said? I've said um, burnished stone um, hmm. I mean, even yeah, I'm looking at aspen snow. Maybe a little bit too much green. So no, I think that if we look at the colours that I've just mentioned before, um, burnished stone, chalk stone, and the other colour that I had up here, or even actually warm smoke. Okay, I've got quite a few colors happening here. What I'll do is, um, you come back to me with a little bit more information, I'll pop these colors into the feed and then we can go from there. But I'm actually thinking that upon looking here a little bit more, I'll see if I can get that up on the screen for us. Um, this could be quite a lovely color. Where are we? Okay, warm smoke actually could be quite a nice sort of chalky sort of white I think that could actually work quite well but as I said before if you come back to me with a little bit more information I will be more than happy to um, put together some colors for you so you know I think that actually it looks like we've got all our questions that I'll come back on screen that concludes tonight's session um, I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us I'm going to be off screen but um, behind the laptop etc for the next half an hour or so to answer any more questions that you may have regarding as I'm saying um, color projects or any of our wonderful products that we have available so certainly um, pop some questions into the feed and I'll do my best to answer them for you next week we won't be um, having a live color session um, due to um, I'll be interstate so unable to do a session next week but join us again the week after that um, so stay safe everybody and as I always say happy painting thanks very much bye